Heart blocks are not complicated, but you have to understand the PRI, the PR interval to know it cold. So here it is. The PR interval, normal, is 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. That's normal. Now, if we have a first degree heart block, the PRI is too long. It's a prolonged PRI. It's over 0.2 seconds. Now, right here we can see, a reminder here, the PR interval is the time frame from the start of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS, meaning the beginning of the Q wave and the start of the P wave. So, you can see it here, and I'll put a, you can put a picture up here, you can see it too here to here. So that's the PRI. To master heart blocks, we got to hyper-focus on the PRI. First degree heart blocks are usually just a variant of old age. Remember, first degree heart block, it's not an actual block. It's really just a delay in the PR interval. We're not dropping beats. We are not dropping QRS complexes, meaning every P wave has a QRS with it. The PRI is just too long. There's no treatment needed usually. So let's say you're in the ambulance, you hook up the EKG and you see a first degree heart block. I would tell you, treat your patient sign symptoms, follow up with those sign symptoms, continue to do vital signs, reassess the patient, but make sure you do a 12 week EKG in that patient. We call this really routine ALS, right? So routine ALS care, of course, follow your patient sign symptoms, but there's no treatment needed for first degree heart block by itself. Now we are dropping beats, a second degree type one, the nickname is a Winky Bach. Now with this heart block we have, the PR interval, our PRI is getting longer, 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 and then the beat drops. What I mean by beats dropping, or when I say dropping beats means, you have a P wave that shows up and there's no QRS attached to it, which means we dropped the conduction. There's no heartbeat, if you will, in this rhythm. So we see the P wave all by itself. You'll notice that longer, longer drops pattern. You will see drop beats, which means, think about it, if we're losing heartbeats on EKG, what does that mean? It means the patient's heart rate is gonna be lower, right? So if the patient's heart rate gets too low, we have to act. Notice the difference between this one, the, the drop beats here at second degree type one, versus first degree. First degree, the heart rate is unchanged. Here we have a heart rate that is changed, right? So we gotta act. If we have a patient is in the ambulance and they're symptomatic with a second degree type one, yes, of course, do a 12 weight EKG, of course, but no, you can use atropine for these patients. Rarely at this stage, pacing is needed, but it is in your arsenal. So, go ahead and do a 12 week EKG. You have atropine to use to increase the heart rate, then you have pacing if needed, but rarely at this stage. This is the beginning of the bad heart blocks. With second degree type two, the nickname is a Mobitz two. Things are getting very serious. To start, atropine is no longer effective. We cannot use atropine, why? The reason is this, in second degree type two heart blocks, the block is below the AV node. Atropine works all the way up at the top of the heart, up at the SA node. So meaning atropine will be ineffective. Pacing is required for these patients. On EKG, this is a hallmark sign, it's right here. As you can see from the EKG, the PRI is constant. It is not changing. It's not too long. It's constant. So we have, it's not longer, longer drops. It's constant. But we are dropping beats leading to too low of a heart rate. These patients will require pacing. And we're only one step away from complete heart block, which is the worst of them all. Complete heart block is the worst heart block of them all. With complete heart block, the atria and the ventricles are not communicating or speaking with each other at all. 
there's no PRI, no P wave, no QRS connection between the P wave and the QRS. There is no pattern, no correlation. So think about this. The impulse is supposed to start up in the atria and move its way down. So we have the entire heartbeat, right? There is nothing being conducted from atria to ventricle with complete heart block, which is going to lead, this is prolonged, to cardiac arrest. That's what's going to happen here. So a pacer is required. That's the main thing here you want to remember. And remember, there's no pattern with the PRI. So here's how you know you have a complete heart block. If we are dropping beats, which we are here, if we are dropping beats and the PRI is not longer, longer drops, and it's not constant, if it's anything else, it's a complete heart block. And there it is. First link in the description down below is exactly what I give my students to pass school, pass NREMT, and also get prepared for school, whether it's EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic. The video vault includes over 420 videos of content, plus access to our private student group that's in the thousands. First link in the description to join that, and my friends, I will catch you in the next video. Let's go.